All right, welcome back everyone. We're gonna to talk today about an alternative for converting a unit into another unit. This is probably one of the greatest academic skills that you can have for math and science. It's called dimensional analysis. It's sometimes referred to as unit conversion. And it really is nothing more than a way of multiplying and dividing units such that you uh, end up with a unit that you're seeking. So I have a strategy here on the right that is good for solving dimensional analysis problems. It says identify what you're given, set a goal, select something called conversion factors, and then build a fence. All of those deserve um, some explanation, but in order to get to that explanation, we should probably just look at a problem. So here's a problem that may seem very familiar to you. Uh, convert 56.5 millimeters to centimeters. You know, last week we looked at um, moving decimal places in order to make conversions. So for instance, we knew, you know, a base unit and then several prefixes that came off of that base, like deci and centi and milli. So in this particular problem, we have a, a pretty easy way of solving it. Um, if I'm at millimeters, which is where I'm at right now in this problem, 56.5 millimeters, and I wanna to change to centimeters, all I have to do is move that decimal one place to the left and that gives me my answer. So I know the answer to this problem is 5.65 centimeters. But there's a, another approach that we could use called dimensional analysis. And I'll be honest with you, in a problem like this, where I'm going from one Greek prefix to another, probably moving the decimal is the easiest way to go. But there are all sorts of conversions in which moving the decimal is just not possible. So we're gonna use this simple problem just to demonstrate the technique. It says identify the given. That's my given, 56.5 millimeters. I usually am gonna start by just rewriting that. So I say 56.5 millimeters, and then I'm gonna draw a horizontal line underneath that unit and a vertical line right next to it. We'll talk about why momentarily. I wanna get from millimeters to centimeters. And so the process generally works like this. On the line below and adjacent to where I started, I'm gonna write the unit that I have currently in place, millimeters. And on the line above it, I'm gonna write the unit that I'm trying to get to centimeters. What I'm developing right now is conversion factor. And a conversion factor just relates the two units to one another. So I usually treat it this way. I know that milli is one decimal place away from centi. That's one power of 10, also known as just 10 away from centimeters. That means that there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter. I usually put the number that's bigger than one with the smaller unit. Milli is smaller than centi. So they're in a, they're in a ratio of one to 10. Now I'm ready to solve this problem. And to solve it, I just have to recognize that this strange apparatus that we've got in front of us is really just a way of multiplying and dividing. So anything that is uh, on top of the line, of the horizontal line, it's gonna be multiplied by one another. And anything that is on top and bottom, they're gonna be divided by one another. Long story short, this is a way of canceling out units because if I divide millimeters by millimeters, they cancel each other out so I can get rid of them. 
And that's going to leave me with centimeters. But I also have to multiply and divide the numbers. So on my calculator, what I'm going to do is say 56.5 times 1 divided by 10. And if you do that, you get the same answer that we started with, 5.65 centimeters. That's really all there is to dimensional analysis. Let's try a second problem. Let's say I was given 412 milliseconds, and I'm asked to change that into kiloseconds. Okay, so I need to know a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to do is start with the given 412 milliseconds. And you actually have a lot of choices. One of the things that I am in favor of personally is always working with a base unit, but you don't have to. Let me show you what, what I mean by that. I can go from milliseconds to seconds in one step and then have a second step where I go from seconds to kiloseconds. Let's think about what that might look like, okay? So on my Greek prefix chart, kilo is way out here, and here's my base, and here is milli. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at what's the relationship between milli and the base. They are three decimal places apart. That's 10 to the third or 1,000. And I always, like I said before, keep my larger number with the smaller unit. So there are a thousand milliseconds for every one second. Likewise, if I wanted to do a similar transition between seconds and kiloseconds, I'm going to look at the difference on, on my diagram. They are three apart, again, three decimal places apart. And that means that there are a thousand seconds in every one kilosecond. Let's think about how that affects our units. First, milliseconds cancel out. Second, seconds cancel out. And finally, I'm left with kiloseconds. All I have to do is multiply and divide out. So I'm going to say 412 times 1 times 1 divided by 1,000 and divided by 1,000 again. I usually plug it into my calculator just like I said it. So 412 times 1 times 1 divided by 1,000 divided by 1,000 once again. And if you do that, you're going to get, in this particular case, let's do it on our calculator, 412 divided by 1,000 divided by 1,000, I get... 0 0.000412, and that's kiloseconds. Let me show you an alternative. We could go directly from our original unit to our goal unit. So I could say 412 milliseconds. Set up my units so that I want to go from milliseconds to kiloseconds directly. All I have to do is see how far apart are they on the Greek prefix chart. They're 10 to the sixth apart. 10 to the sixth means 1 million. Or I could just write 10 to the sixth milliseconds. Remember, keep the big number with the small unit in one kilosecond milliseconds cancel with milliseconds. And on my calculator, I just have to say 412 divided by 10 to the sixth, 0 0.000412 kiloseconds is still my answer. In our next video, we're going to look at examples where we really have no choice. We can't move a decimal there's no decimal to move, and so we have to use dimensional analysis. But we'll save that for another time. See you then.